Hi guys, it's Valerie, and welcome to Drawing with Fire. Today is part two of the gourd video, and we are inking with alcohol inks, and we're starting off with doing the background. Do the base of the gourd first, and this is my first time doing this as well, so this will be interesting. Well, Born Gourd Farms did uh, supply the inks for me, and all that will be linked down in the description below if you're interested. And away we go. I am using the sponge applicator to apply a section of my background color. This was is very. I wish I would have. Uh, purchased um, some of the gourd shards so that I could test out my ink colors first. When I wiped it on with a piece of paper, it wasn't the color I thought was going to come out. It's still a beautiful color. It just was not what I was expecting. And in sections, you need to use a heat gun to heat set the ink so that it's not coming off on your hands and it's ready to go. It will turn matte and lose the shininess, but you'll get that back at the end. This is how you know that it is dried. So I tried to do large groups starting in the back of just the background, and as we go further in, I will use a different tool to apply the ink around the burning itself. As you can see, that berry color is a beautiful color. It is transparent, and so that's why the color is different. The gourd is shining through. Now I'm using the mini applicator to go around my burning and get into those tight corners is a very helpful tool and it, you can get an extender for it so that it's easier to hold and I, I do appreciate that extender. My hand was getting tired with the smaller pieces. the sponge applicator to try to draw the ink out into the background and blend it and I wasn't happy with getting in these small spots so I uh, pulled out a cotton tip and found that the cotton tip was q-tip was much easier to blend out into the background ink and make everything a little more even. At this point I've already gotten the rest of the board all colored in in the background and I'm just showing you because it's all the same technique and from beginning to end of getting out all the background in with the uh, mini felt tip applicator and blending out with the cotton swab. Now that the background's filled in, I really wanted the leaves to have a shadowing effect underneath and have them pop out more. And I mixed colors together that I was using within the gourd piece and I found I had a really hard time making it as dark as I wanted it to. Here I'm using the cotton swab tip of their applicators and it's a great applicator. It holds a lot of ink and I'm getting into the small spots but because of the transparent ink I'm not getting the depth that I'm really wanting. So what I would do in the future is I would put a dark color underneath the leaves or whatever I'm trying to create the shadow underneath and then go over it with my background color and I think that would work much better for me. So here I have the background complete, and I actually did the side leaves. Unfortunately, somehow I lost the video. I'm not exactly sure how that happened. Here I'm showing all the colors that I used in the leaf, and will continue to use for the main subject, the green man in the front. All, everything is the same on how I'm doing it. I, you just get a little quick sneak peek of what those colors look like on the leaves. <laughs> As you can tell, I have all the colors laid out on a 
kitchen tile that I spent 89 cents on at Home Depot. It worked great for me on holding the ink, keeping the ink wet. I did not have a problem with the ink drying out while I was working for hours and hours. I could walk away for a day and come back to pick it up right where I left off. The ink stayed wet on the tile and I was really happy with that. I didn't waste any ink. As you can tell, the ink goes very well over the burning. I was impressed. It didn't fade out the burning. The burning shows great through the inks. And I will definitely be trying these inks on wood and other materials to see how it also reacts and works out. I was really happy with this. And for the Green Man, I did a base green color and then I used a darker green. And I also used yellow to give it some depth and accent the shading as well. Most of the green man's face is in and now it's time to start working on the leaves. I wanted to get that face in in order to so that I could have a better idea of how dark or light I wanted the leaves to be. I wanted yellows to be closer to the edge to help pop them out with there being a purple shade in the berry color. Those are opposites on the color wheel and I really wanted them to stand out separate from each other. Because I did want balance. What you're seeing is I'm laying the green ink on one leaf and then I'm going directly across to the opposite leaf and laying ink down there as well. I'm not trying to copy both leaves exactly to each other, but I am trying to keep them balanced. And that's how I went through the whole gourd doing each leaf. I would do the leaf on one side and then flip it over and go to the leaf on the other side to keep them even and balanced. And again with my trusty uh, Q-tip, I had a couple out, so on one end I guess all the green inks I used uh, one tip and would flip it over and all the orange and yellow, and it really helped blend them nicely together. I didn't lose the orange or the yellow just because I had the green being blended next to it. I was, I was really happy with that. <laughs> So I've gone through, done all the leaves, and this is how it's looking so far. Everything was heat set in between. I would do two leaves, heat set it, and now it's time to take care of the top rim and what you see on the inside. I'm mixing some of the Gord Satin Varnish Finish with a couple of drops, three drops I believe, of the berry and mixing it together and using a paintbrush to paint it inside.
after mixing the varnish and ink with a palette knife, I wish I mixed this quickly in life, I'm using a Simply Simmons acrylic paintbrush to apply the varnish inside the gourd. It worked great. In general, you can find this brush online or at big, big box stores for under $4. With this being my first time working with the gourd and the varnish, I did mix a little too much of the varnish, varnish, and I could have used less. As you can see the texture, I'm really filling it in with the paintbrush. I went further down than you really need to, but I didn't inside the gourd, but I didn't want to waste what I poured out. <laughs> There is one thing I've forgotten to do with my wood burner, and that was sign my initials. I quickly pulled out the writing nib for the nibs burner and did my initials in the year just so I'd have it documented for my first gourd. I decided to use the protecting wax on the cord instead of the satin varnish because I thought it would work out quicker for me without having to do a bunch of layers and boy was this a learning experience. I misplaced my felt, tore up my studio, could not find it anywhere. So I'm using the Viva paper towels that are more cloth like to apply. Now when you apply the wax you're only supposed to have it sit on the cord for 5-10 to 10 minutes, it becomes hazy and then you buff it out. This is where I made my biggest mistake. I decided to take a break and ended up letting the wax sit for about 20-30 minutes and I have to figure out how to get it off now. Normally you would use the felt to not only apply the wax but to buff it out. Again, don't have my felt so I tried with the paper towel. The wax is not moving. It is already solidified and I try a old t-shirt from one of my kids. I'm having lint left on the gourd. I'm scrubbing trying to buff this out and it's not working. And then I decided to pull out the heat gun and actually heat up the wax just a little bit. Not enough to really melt it, just enough to make it more pliable. And that's where I was able to start buffing it out. In the end, the satin varnish would have probably been quicker to apply a couple of layers and be done because I spent a good 20 to 30 minutes trying to buff out the wax. My hands were cramping and so tired after this. Moral of this story, buff your wax when the directions tell you to. <laughs> At 10x, my hands really moving. Wish I could have done it this quickly. Now, we're starting to see that the gloss is coming back. The inks are looking great. We no longer have a matte finish. I'm really happy with how this gourd is turning out. Yay, it's all finished. I am so happy with it. I think it came out beautifully. I hope you enjoyed the video. I love being able to create videos to help teach and inspire. Please let me know what you think of the video and what other videos you'd like to see. The end card here does work, so you can click on the next video to watch. Don't forget to hit the like button, and if you're new here, subscribe. Join our Drawing with Fire family. You're always welcome. Happy burning, guys. Thanks.